Uh, I have um, qu- um, preguntas para vosotras. Tenía preguntas para Elena, dispreu. Y un ting, dispreu. Bueno, me llamo María Dolores García Borrón y uh, respecto al millón de lo que hablabais, ¿es that a million euro o a million uh, sterling pounds? A million euro. What well, for the budget? Thank you. A million euros. Okay. Yeah. Más preguntas? No. Yo tengo. Uh, Elena, I have some questions. Great. But I, in, in terms of, uh, I'm a producer and, yep. you know, a kind of a, that kind of editorial line. Uh, my question, first one is, if uh, I consider I have a low budget for the mi- 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 micro market, I need uh, a very track record, like two, like two movies done before and so? No, you don't need to, well, you need to, um, I wouldn't say feature films, but you would need to have done something. So maybe short films or something like this, and, and your director should have also done short films. And the application is, um, is more creative um, than the PFM, and you do need the script and everything, and you will need to supply um, evidence of what you and the director has done. So if you've done short films, then show, you know, attach the short films so that we can look at them. Um, I have another one. It's, um, do you recommend at the same time, once you know that you've been selected, either for the micro or for the big one, um, to attend to a specific training course in how to pitch project for financiers, not for um, uh, state, the usual stakeholders. <laughs> but I mean, because there is a lot of training courses going on, the yeah. elevator pitch, the lessons that, I mean, all the documentaries, uh, markets that we have supported by Media in Catalonia, they have always a special session for all those projects selected to have one day in advance, the kind of how to pitch during the 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you prepare, you do your, your exercise, you're nervous, you know how to do it. But when you were pitching in front of a financier, you have to change your thing. Yeah. It's, you are not focusing exactly on the same things. I mean, the project is going to speak by itself. But I want your opinion because I recommend always, specifically for the London, even I, I've been there, but I know yeah. the material, that you have to prepare yourself in front of financiers, not just when you are pitching on a creative aspect in front of, a, let's say, a minimum guarantee distributor or a sales agency, it's quite different because yeah. it's, it's about what you get me back. It's something, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think you rec- the question is, do you do recommend, recommend to attend and prepare yourself to do maximize your time? Well, I think the answer to that is absolutely because I, that isn't, it's not going to do you any harm at all in your future as a producer to have any kind of training on any kind of pitching, but particularly financial pitching. So it would always put you in good stead for anything that you're going to do in the future. So yes, if there is a training course that you can go on or a one-day thing or whatever, I would absolutely recommend it. Uh, and I think that, it, and again, my colleagues at Micromarket will give you more information. I don't run Micromarket, so I don't know the details as much, but I'm pretty sure that what the, this training day that they do a, a month or so before the market or a few weeks for the market will include that kind of stuff. But with the PFM, uh, we don't do any, any training. So if you can go on one, then that's fine. But then, you know, that would, that would be a great idea. Um, but uh, yes, you are, they are, the financiers, they don't want to hear the fluffy stuff, you know. They, they want to hear the hard nose, what, you know, what you're going to be able to do for how much money, what they're expecting, what you're expecting of them. Uh, and I think that the difficulty is you will have that idea in your head and, and that's fine. But by day two, when you're tired and, you know, this will be the, you know, 15th time you've done this pitch is to keep the, is to keep the momentum. And that's, that's, where it, that's where it becomes difficult. And it's difficult from the financiers' point of view because they've heard God knows how many pitches before. So it's, it's, trying to find a way to keep up and, uh, and that. And, and one of the things that we also do, actually, which is quite interesting, no other finance market does this, is at the end of the second day, for the producers, there will be some panel and information and, um, events for you to attend because we have one-to-one meetings for the financiers. So they will be meeting each other to discuss the projects that have been presented to them over the last one and a half days. Because it might be that they uh, are interested in a project and if they know that somebody else is, then they can do it together. So, so it's, you know, it's really important to kind of get them on side. But I mean, you know, I, if there's an opportunity for you to have some training, do it. Why are you mentioning that about the training? I mean, I, mean, I see the point, 
perfectly. But you mean, are you organizing some kind of 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 jornadas or something? Media, about that? media do, media program does around but, Europe. Oh, I didn't know that, but not in Barcelona. No, no, no. There are training courses specifically. And it's not the, the subject today. I, I, no, es el, el tema de hoy. Pero media es un programa global que va de cadena de valor desde formación hasta exhibición en formación. Hay iniciativas que en concurrencia pública piden dinero público a la Comisión Europea para implementar los mejores resultados con la mejor formación de profesionales a profesionales en cuatro campos que luego se pueden pixelar en muchísimos más campos. Que tienen que ver en la financiación, tienen que ver en nuevas tecnologías, en la escritura de contenidos, esto lo tiene que ver con escritura, y después en marketing y distribución. Entonces, entre medio puede haber varios. Puedes encontrar cursos muy específicos de adaptaciones um, de... Uh, documentales con animación, que es una rareza que existe, pero existe un mercado, es decir, hay, hay, te preparan para ello, cómo gestionar material de archivo, hasta prácticamente cómo trabajar de contenidos de realidad virtual, que es el nuevo curso que ha entrado como elemento novedoso, porque claro, media tiene que estar abierto a las tendencias. Entre todos esos cursos tenemos una guía publicada colgada en nuestra página web, pero también um, en papel la editan cada dos o tres años por tema de costes, la van actualizando, hay que estar muy, muy al tanto de esos cursos y tienen que ver con cómo se presenta en acceso a financiación el profesional. Es decir, hay cursos que te forman de cómo presentar un pitching desde un punto de vista artístico para guionistas y directores. Yo siempre explico lo mismo. Cuando haces un pitching de una película de aventuras, hay que vestirse no con un traje, sino mejor con una chaqueta de cuero, porque es un lenguaje subliminal, pero eso lo aprendes en el curso. <risa> lo puedes utilizar, no puedes utilizar. Es una de las cosas que te quedan como anécdota. Pero hay, hay cursos que son prácticamente para hablar de lenguaje financiero. Yo lo que quería hacer el, el point con Elena es que muchas veces estamos acostumbrados a entender de una manera, igual que hablamos un inglés, um, un inglés común, habla, entendemos el pitching de una manera común que todo el mundo se esfuerza por parecerse a esa intelequia de lo que es hacer un pitching ideal de siete minutos, elevator pitch, lo que sea, pero que, que no es todo lo mismo, que en función de quién está en el otro lado, debes matizar para maximizar el éxito y ser más sexy que los otros, que es donde está el caso. El cansancio de estos mercados donde van pasando los speed meetings y las reuniones es que si no mantienes, como decía Elena, el discurso fresco, te pierdes. Solución, ir muy bien, muy bien armado, para tener todas tus um, um, sexy uh, posibilidades uh, para destacar, para que después hablen de ti. Hello, my name is Tony Monfort. I work for, for the Garage Films, and my question is if, if in this uh, space uh, that you can bring also series. Well, actually, funny enough, somebody asked me that same question yesterday. Um, the the short answer at the moment is no, just because we've only really been focusing on feature length films um, for a theatrical cinema release. It's something that we have discussed internally about having something for high-end TV, um, whether it's, you know, you know, miniseries, whether, you know, whatever, that, that kind of high-end TV drama. And I think it's something that we, we will continue to look at. It depends on the funding that we continue to get and whether we do it as a sidebar to the PFM or whether we actually have it as a separate event. I mean, the budgets in high-end TV now are so much higher than they ever were um, and the quality and everything is, is so much so much more improved than it ever was that there is certainly, um, there's certainly something for us to think about, but for the PFM at the moment, no. And also I should say that a lot of people ask me the question, what about documentaries? And documentaries, I would just say, we don't we don't say no to documentaries but because the budget level for pfm is a million or a million euros or above it makes it quite difficult for a, in a unless you're making a proper seriously high-end documentary uh it's <coughs> it's unlikely that the that the budgets are going to be over a million but they might be considered for micro for, for, for micro market but documentaries we love them but they're difficult for us at the pfm uh, how you it's advisable to have a brand new director. Imagine you have excellent um, company, good track record, mm -hmm. uh, coherent budget, mm -hmm. uh, catchy script, mm -hmm. even a letter of Javier Bardem. Okay. Like, he's like, you know, flirting with the project. Okay. But happen to be, always happen. And they have a kind of a co-producer involved because they work in the past, usually France or in English, uh -huh. Italian, you know, the ones we work with in Spain, Portuguese. Yeah. 
uh, not not Bulgarian. I mean, you know, the ones <laughs> yeah. that in the comfort zone. Yeah. And all of a sudden, brand new director because this is my movie. How the chances to be selected when you have the whole thing coherent, but maybe part of the game is that at the end, if that baby will progress, the producers they have to decision decision to replace the director. How helps in the market? How it's in equal in equal opportunities is like have more chances in a lot of ways are you protecting the new talent the yeah. new directors or it's like no because if major play players you need a track record in to be kind of a no i think that we um it, it really and truly we're not going to be selecting something on the cast is one of the last things that we would be looking at i mean the cast is the is the the cream really isn't it on 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 the on the cake good to know good to yeah. know yeah um i mean for us it's really about the 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 producer and the track record that the producer can handle and deliver the budget and uh that the director is you know established and that can also be you know attractive to um financiers um and that you know that the budget works that you know within your finance plan it it all works from a sort of financial point of view the cast i mean it's great we'd like to see the level of cast you're working at and if there are new people there that we don't know that's not going to be a problem to us you the problem that you're going to have is convincing this, the the financiers that that this is a good a good horse to bet on if you see what i mean um but everybody has to come through at some at some point you know everybody has to emerge uh, whether they are producers or or acting talent they have to come through and uh, and i think if you make the a good enough case um then it's a it's not a problem we don't see it as a problem in terms of the selection but it's really about the overall package thanks for saying that i'm, I'm doing trying to like a dj mixing because yeah. now we're going to have valerie and, and sergi and yeah. valerie precisely has a project that it's been really successful in in the recent months precisely because the whole coherent the package is coherent yeah because it's a brand new director but it's the whole thing it's yeah. about the freshness right. of the project what I was trying to confront is about when you were too too ambitious mm -hmm. and rather you were relaying everything on the shoulders of someone that it's really a new talent. Of course, the media is for new talent, but I'm saying it's about watching the coherence of the project. And finally, in jam closing, um, maybe you have enough more questions. It's now, the, uh, this is publicity for the program, uh, Creative Europe. Uh, recently, we implemented the Guarantee Fund. Yes. You know, and how you're going to try to put someone from the Guarantee Fund there uh, telling, sending the message that para los que no sabéis, um, Europa Creativa uh, tiene tres bloques, Cultura Media, y se ha retrasado mucho tiempo, lanzado con retraso 2016, para el periodo 2017-2020, el instrumento de garantía financiera. El instrumento de garantía financiera, hablando en claro, es un aval de avales, no es una línea de subvención. La comisión, a través del FEI, el Banco de inversiones europeo confía y gestiona 121 millones en cuatro años para que avale a las sociedades de garantía recíproca que actúan en cada país. España ha firmado con la primera en firmar con, um, con CERSA que agrupa las 19 sociedades de garantía recíproca entre las cuales destaca Crea CERSA entre otras, para que el productor que ya va a pedir que una SGR le facilite el acceso a la financiación esa precisamente que ya le da la aval si aprueba el proyecto, vaya más facilitada por el aval que le da Europa. ¿Se entiende? La pregunta que le hago a Elena es cómo incorporan este nuevo player eh, financiero en un mercado de financiero para que los proyectos sean más sólidos. Es decir, hasta qué punto pueden tener a alguien eh, que pueda hablar del instrumento, porque hay proyectos que se lo merecen, es decir, hay proyectos que son sólidos y que enseguida pueden levantar más fácilmente el aval que otros. So we are, uh, you know, our, one of our biggest funders is uh, is the Creative is Creative Europe, and um, so um, we actually will get um, confirmation from them in the next few weeks on their on their on their support, and we'll talk to them about the Media Guarantee Fund, and about who they think should be put forward to actually attend. One of our advisors actually um, in Europe on the production finance market and has been w involved with us from the beginning is a, a company called Peaceful Fish. So Thierry Bojar. 
So uh, he's very involved with, or has been very involved with the Media Guarantee Fund. So we work through him to um, to see whether that's a, an appropriate, uh, per, whether it's Thierry or whether it's somebody that's actually working if, on if the fund. If you need help, I know Thierry for sure. It's an yeah. excellent uh, choice. Yeah. But uh, knowing that the budget is already um, finished for 2017, say 16, 17, <coughs> Mm. Um, um, the, the first ones to sign was Spain, then France, and then Romania. Okay. So if you need any contacts, yeah. Because the part of the deal of the program is that projects that they couldn't go, like UK or Italy or whatever, yeah. can go through. Those, right. Uh, okay. So. Well, I think that you know, not only would it be good to have somebody from the Media Guarantee Fund there, it possibly might even be good for them to actually do a panel and explain it. TV series are they? Uh, no, I, I just no. Uh, unfortunately, you know, not yet. I mean, this uh, production finance market is only for feature films for the cinema, but we do recognise that this is a you know a growing market, and it's something that we might can do in the future, either as a sidebar or possibly a separate event altogether. So, but that's something we need. But for now, no. La pregunta me parece muy oportuna, eh, porque además eh, todo va encaminado hacia ahí, eh. es decir, series lujosas mmm, con los formatos que se están pidiendo en los nuevos operadores y es muy oportuna, me parece estupenda. O sea, que, que lo planteen, porque... No, 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 yo me, yo me refería precisamente a eso. Sí, te, Venimos ya, de ya, los ya, que ya, han estado en, en el MIP, habéis visto que, lo que la tendencia es hacer un tipo de minutajes y de número de capítulos y de tendencias ya sabemos, el, el, el Nordic Noir ya está quemado, pero vienen otras tendencias para, y media está apoyando mucho esa línea que ahora no toca, pero ya se la ha he hecho en otro hashtag Europe Calls, que es la de TV Programming que es de tener la serie por antonomasia con IP europea, por tanto no es descabellado que de aquí un par de años um, la, la misma iniciativa de Elena tenga un spin-off que sea para series pero eso me parece oportuno, sí, sí la pregunta es, si uh, if the micro, micro market is open to micro budgets uh, obviously, she's thinking about microfinancing. So, there is any chance to get that opportunity, which is the opportuni real opportunities of getting those uh, microfinancing for the micro budget in the micro market? Yeah, I mean, we've, yeah, this, is, this is the third, this, is, this will be the third year we've done micro, uh, micro market. And uh, the people that we invite are financiers. So, absolutely, there is an opportunity to get microfinancing. Cuando tú tienes muy claro que eres micro, 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 hay una parte que nunca falla, que siempre es complementaria, siempre es coherente a cada proyecto. Yo siempre lo recomiendo. Es la parte de crowdfunding y uh, familia. Uh, familia. Familia del mundo de los crowds, eh? no familia de locos, fools, uh, friends, no, no. Me refiero a todo lo que tiene que ser crowdfunding, crowd art. Crowd. ¿Por qué? Porque en el fondo... Los recursos son limitados, pero muchas veces son muy coherentes al tamaño final del proyecto. Es decir, no es descabellado que por un proyecto de 500.000 hagas un crowdfunding, porque es, es absolutamente razonable y que levantes una parte importante del dinero. Pero eso es micro, 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 una película de 2 millones. Entonces, ¿qué estás está haciendo con el, con el crowdfunding, una película de 2 millones? Hacer un plan de comunicación. Es en ganar los followers y preparar la audiencia. Entonces, ya es otro, otra cosa. Tiene otro peso específico, los, los 25.000 euros que puedes levantar, los, 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 ¿sabes?